Good morning, guys. Okay, so if you've seen my previous video, you will see that I broke down last Friday in Buxton. I was brought back on the back of a flatbed. And um, it's now Thursday the following week. I've not had much time to get down and um, check the scoot out, but I've tried getting half an hour in here and there just to try and diagnose what the problem was. The scooter just would not start. So very quickly, I'm gonna run you through where I'm up to, what I've done so far, what I've tested, and um, show you where I'm up to. And then we're gonna have a go at a couple of little jobs today. All right, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what I've done and the order I've done it in. Um, we'll take it from there, all right? Hopefully we can get it started in the next 24 hours. Okay. So the first thing I checked was the battery. I used a multimeter and without turning the ignition, it was reading about 13.26 volts. So I just assumed that the battery was good and um, I was happy with that. I didn't really investigate that any further. The next thing I did was I thought it could be a problem with the immobilizer. So I've disconnected the immobilizer, right? All the wiring from the immobilizer is disconnected. And um, I put the original fuse back in and put the wire into the way that it was originally. Um, so the factory wiring, if you like. Still nothing at all. Okay, so all that happens when you turn the key, but I can't actually show you now because the battery is dead. I'll explain that in a minute. But when you turn the key, the display was running through its sequence. The fuel pump was priming. You could hear the fuel pump priming. So tried to start the scoot here, and what was happening was the solenoid down here was clicking, and this relay here, which sits in that little um, rubber housing there, that relay was kind of clicking repeatedly, right? And I thought that might be the problem. Anyway, what I did was I checked it wasn't the solenoid. I spanned that with a screwdriver, those connections, tried to start the scoot, and still nothing, okay? So that led me to believe that the solenoid was okay. But... To be on the safe side, I did get my hands on a, a new one for 15 quid, right? 15 quid. And it wasn't that. So the next thing I did was I worked my way along, and from everything I read online, I was led to believe it could be the starter motor, which is down there. I'm going to come around the other side of the scoop, and you'll see this. Oh, coffee and crackers. They're nothing to do with it. Right, so the starter motor is in there. And what I did was I took the old starter motor out... Okay, with the intention of testing it and putting power to it and seeing if it turned. And then my curiosity got the better of me. Got the better of me. What I did was I ended up, here's the old starter motor, kind of taking out a couple of screws that I shouldn't have taken out and the whole thing came apart, right? So that's the starter motor, the old starter motor. And the problem was I couldn't get these contacts back in. See them contacts there? They, they kind of slide into those little holders there. And I could get them back in, but then I couldn't hold them to slide this bit back in. So I thought rather than mess around with it and try and do it, I'll just order a new one. So I got a new starter motor, which is now fitted in there. Dead straightforward to fit the starter motor. Um, you simply un undo these two bolts here, one there and one there. And it just kind of slide. it lifts up a little bit and then you slide it out and it's got the... Um, the spindle on the end that connects to the gearing in there right so it's dead easy you've just got to be a little bit careful with it but that's the starter motor so i put the new starter motor in still the scoot wouldn't start okay now so far i spent 15 quid on a solenoid and 45 quid on the starter motor okay so we're up to 60 quid this relay down here um i think it's called the logic relay i had a look on the royal alloy website and they had about seven in stock, and with Royal Alloy parts being so rare, I ordered a new one, right? It's not arrived yet, but I'm just thinking that the scoot's done 10,000 miles, and any time I get a chance to maybe buy a few extra parts at a good price, then it's good to have them in reserve, even if it's not the problem. So that's on its way. Now, the next thing I checked, everything was saying, uh, check the stator. Now, the stator lives in here behind this um, flywheel, okay? So we're gonna take this casing off and look at the stator. And the reason I believe it's the stator now is if you look at this connector here, this connector block, the cable from that comes from the stator, which is back here. Okay, if we follow that cable around there, it kind of comes out of the plastic housing back here. 
when we disconnect this, you can see there on the outside there's a little bit of burning. Okay, I'm going to disconnect that block there. Bear with me. There. If we look inside there, you can see that there's burning around that terminal there. And there's burning there, right? So, it's either one of two things. It's the stator in here, which sends the current back to the battery. Okay, or it's the regulator that regulates the amount of current here. Uh, I think it's also sometimes known as a rectifier. Now, I'm guessing it's either this or it's this, or it could be both. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off, have a look at the stator first. I've actually got my hands on a new stator, right? Because that was obviously the problem. This is the new stator over here. And that's not sending the current back to the battery, right? That's the new stator. So we're gonna get that in today. Also got a new battery, right? Because that battery we've got is at least four years old and um, it's not charging because the stator isn't charging the battery. Now, when I checked it again, the battery, as I said, it read over 13 volts, just as is. But when I checked it again uh, with the multimeter and I turned the key in the ignition, it was dropping down to about seven or eight volts straight away. So I'm thinking, right, that battery's done. Let's get a new one, just to be on the safe side. And um, we've got a new battery. So we're gonna get the stator in today and the battery. And if it still doesn't work, the only thing it can be is this, this regulator, all right? So let's get cracking. Okay guys, so taking the stator cover off here, I think it's just one nut over here, that one there. And I think it's that one down there, all right? And my finger is there. So I think if we undo them, we should be able to pull it away. Maybe that one there as well, three. Um, and then we need a special tool, right, called a flywheel remover tool. I ordered it off Amazon and it was about 12 quid. So this is the flywheel remover tool off Amazon. And um, we'll see how that works in a minute, all right? But you do need one of them tools to get the flywheel off. take this one out that's um, eight mil eight millimeters onto this one a bit fiddly there we go okay, so I'm hoping that that plastic cover now just slides away and we should see the flywheel, or I think they call it a magneto, and the stator. Done a little bit of research on this on YouTube. So there we go. So. They're the same. One slight longer, so the longer one is this one. And the shorter one is the top one there. And there's a little bracket there that holds your cables. So that bracket there, can you see that? That holds all your cables. And that bolts onto that connection there. So that should just slide away now. I'm gonna put that in there so we don't lose it. Put that with that, and then two screws over there. So now they should just slide away, yes. There's the one more holding it. There's one more underneath, I think. There it is. So down underneath on the right hand side of the casing. Okay. That's another one of these eight millimeter bolts. So there we go, so that should just drop out of there now. Oh, 
fiddly. It's a little bit fiddly, it's getting stuck on the exhaust there. There must be a way of getting this off. See, little things like this one, you just think it's going to be straightforward, but you just can't lift it off. The secret, what's the secret? It's a little bit of clearance there. So that's your flywheel, so we need to take that off and then we need to use our special tools. We've got one, two, three, four bolts there holding that on. Okay, what size? Eight mil. Now, see how that rotates. Yeah. We can hold it and then we can go. Remember guys, I'm not a professional, this is just me having a bash. And learning as we go. And hopefully, someone can benefit from these videos. Sharing the love. flywheel cover I think they call it pop that to one side now this is where we need our special tool to undo this okay uh, apparently it's a reverse thread so the special tool kind of holds it in place while it unwinds it so we're gonna have a look at that take that off and the stator is underneath there which we're gonna replace okay okay guys so you can see here we've got two holes on this. This is called the magneto, apparently. Like I said, I've done some research. And what we need to do there is use our clutch holding tool that we've used before, um, when we change the clutch and so on. That's gonna go on there. And we'll use them prongs there. That's gonna go in there to stop it turning. We're gonna jam that against the frame. Or we can hold it manually if we can. All right, we're gonna jam that in. Go that way, okay. And then I'm going to turn that so that jams against the frame. And then we're going to unwind this. And for that, I'm going to use the, um, the gun, right, the impact wrench, with an extender bar on it. Just because it's a slightly funny angle. Make sure we're going the right way. Reverse. So once we get this off, I think we need to use our new tool. But I'm going to hold that there. And hold that there, get that on there. Just about get it at the angle. Not the best. I'm gonna hold that there. There we go. Nearly. Another turn or two. Oh, 
Come on. See you guys warts and all on this channel. No slick production on this channel. This is how it happens, how it goes down. There we go, we're off. Okay, so we can take that off. Now, apparently this is very, very magnetic and this is why you can't pull that off. Okay, so now we need to use our tool here. So that winds onto there, which it can only go one way. So we unwind that. So we've got a little recess inside there. This is going backwards. Yeah, it's a little sticky. I'm gonna put some WD on that to loosen it up. These are pretty poorly made. I mean, 12 quid, just Chinese, cheap. Not very well engineered, but you're only gonna use it once or twice, right? That's a bit free, I know, okay? I'll put a bit of WD-40 on the thread there as well. So that's definitely reverse thread, it goes on the wrong way. I'm going to try to screw that all the way in. Yes, it's going all the way in now. So you see what I've done, I've just dismantled that bit off the main body. And now that's winding all the way in. Got it. Now we're going to tighten that up a little bit. And use them. Okay, so that's good. And now we're going to thread that one in. That's the easy way to do it, guys. It just gives you a little more space to work. You can see the problem there. That floorboard is just in the way. Whoops. Don't like the sound of that cracking sound. Mm, it's just in the way. I'm going to undo this. get this moving it just gives it a little more movement right so that should give us a little more movement there and now let's see if we can get this in yeah it's just not seated right There we go, I can lift it up. Right, I'm lifting it up. And now we're winding that in. We've got it, we've got it, we've got it. So I'm lifting that floorboard up there to wind that up. So now we keep winding that, I guess. As we thought before, and that should start undoing Feel so tight. What am I missing, guys? What am I missing? What am I missing? Do I go the other way? I can't go the other way because that's what I'm doing it. didn't envisage it offering that much resistance when we started to 
unwind it. Unless we need to use the impact wrench on it. Ah, there we go. Got it. I think we've got it. Yeah. Just needed a little bit of force. Now it's unwinding, guys. You see that? It's coming away. So it is quite tight at first. You need to give it a good, a good twist. And now you can see this body is coming away. All we do is we keep winding that in. See that? I'm winding this in. Slowly coming away. Yes. I think I'm just inhibited a little bit by that floorboard. I can wind it in by hand now and it's pulling it away from the body. And this is going to reveal the stator and we will be able to see any damage. Even if it's not damaged, maybe we'll just put the new one in anyway. Fiddly. Over there. There we go. Okay, so that's the state. Now, can we see the damage? It looks alright. So guys, that is the stator. There's no visible damage. There's no burn bits or frayed bits that I can see, so... I know I should be able to test this with a multimeter at some point. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about the way to do it without checking on YouTube. So I'm going to um, be inclined to leave that in. I'm going to undo the regulator here and just inspect that because I suspect it's this that's the problem. So now I've got a new starter motor that I didn't need. And I've got a stator that I've got as a spare. And I've also got a solenoid that I didn't really need either. But I've got them spares in stock. Because when your scooter's done 10,500 miles and it's made of Chinese components, you don't know what's going to go next. So, like I say, I don't mind having these things in as spares. Let's take this off and have a look at it. I think that's a 10mm. Um, should have a, a nut, uh, sorry, a bolt on each side. That one there just doesn't quite align, but it's held in with one bolt there. Okay. So you can't really see anything on that, it's a sealed unit. It unplugs from there. There's our burnt terminal, so I think a new one of them is in order. But I suppose I should check on YouTube and before I go and get one, is make sure that this is not the faulty part that I've already got. How do we test it? Easy guys, when you're not big glasses and you can't see a bloody thing. There we go. What's involved in the wire in there? Feeds up behind there. Try to undo that bar there. There's a bar across there, I don't know if you can see that. There's a bar across there, that's that uh, brass bar that holds in the cable there, you see that? We just need to undo that and then we can slide the cable out. Okay guys, so I've got the new stator fitted. I wasn't going to fit it until I tested the, um, the regulator, right? But I thought, well you know what, I'll do it anyway for the experience. While, I'm, while I've got access to it, I'll have a go at it. Just to gain a bit more experience. So I've put the new stator on there. 
it just fixes with those two bolts there uh, either side of the spindle you can see I've put Loctite on one a um, little bit fiddly to get them back in and get everything aligned but it's, it's fairly straightforward I put the bolts in and then I realized I've not Loctited them so I took them out put a bit of Loctite on each one and uh, should be good last thing I want is that coming loose all right that's the old stator down there taken out so now all we need to do is just reconnect the, the terminal blocks there to these ones here and then I'll put the new battery on and we'll see if it starts but I don't think it's going to because I suspect that the problem is the regulator all right so let's have a look guys just a little observation you see there on this magneto cover there's a little notch there and when you put that back on it needs to align with the um, the notch there like a little ridge on the spindle so it needs to align on there to make sure it sits on properly okay okay guys so the stator is installed all put back together again straightforward really um you can see the cable at the top there all neatly done with the bars holding it all in put the connector blocks back on the rectifier needs bolting back on and um all the bits need putting back in the right place and then cable tying up i've got the new battery here now the problem with the new battery I'm not connected it up properly yet, but it doesn't actually fit into the terminal. So the guy um, that sold me this has given me the wrong size battery, physical size. It won't fit into the opening, so I need to take that back and swap it. Maybe get the Moto Bat that everybody raves about. So now, guys, let's see if it works, right? It's either sorted because I've replaced the stator, or we need to replace the, um, the regulator here. Let's have a go. It's sounding good. There's no clicking. Looking good. Yes, get in. So guys, everything's back together, all running fine. The only problem is the battery that I bought, or the battery that was sold at the shop, and a great shop, AA Mopeds um, in Wigan. Andy helped me out a lot, so big thanks to Andy. But the battery there just doesn't quite fit into the battery compartment, and Andy obviously didn't know that uh, when he sold it to me, so now he does. But yeah, it doesn't fit in the compartment, and uh, that's gonna go back, and I'm gonna switch it for maybe the Moto Bat, uh, if I can get my hands on one. So all done. Okay guys, so a week on since my breakdown. Everything's back up and running, everything's sorted, the wiring's back to normal. I've put the immobiliser back on, uh, everything's good. So what I'm gonna do is just a very quick summary and run you through everything I've done, what the cost has been, and what I've learned from it that I can share with you guys. All right, just gonna flip the camera around. I'll, I'll whiz you through it very quickly. Okay, so. Started off with the um, the solenoid down here. Checked it, it was okay. But I replaced it anyway at the cost of 15 quid just to future-proof the scooter. Now I've got the old one as a spare if I ever need it, all right? Uh, that was straightforward. Coming around the other side of the scoot here, we've got the starter motor. Didn't need to replace that, but did it anyway. And um, again, future-proof the, the bike, hopefully, uh, from any more starting issues, that should last a good deal of time and um, you know I've gained some experience along the way you'll notice that I've not got the old air filter the big box filter that comes as a factory standard uh, instead now I've got the air pod filter um, one of my previous videos when I went to the mod shop in Bradford I did talk about some modifications that I had done but obviously I'm going to leave you to guess which modifications exactly that they were but we've now got the pod air filter on there so you can see everything you can access everything a bit easier right so starter motor wasn't needed, it cost 45 quid. I'm glad I've done it. Okay, coming back around the other side of the scoop, we've got um, the stator in here, okay, behind the flywheel. That was the problem, and that cost 45 quid. And uh, that was the reason that the battery was flat, it wasn't charging the battery. Okay, so that did need doing 45 quid, that was the issue, sorted it out. So plus 12 quid for the correct tool to remove it from Amazon, okay? And then 
what else have we done? We've put the new Moto Bat um, MB9 new battery in there. So pleased we've done that as well. That's good, a good upgrade. And then the other thing is this stator here. Uh, sorry, the regulator, not the stator, the regulator. Um, that's fine, but I did order an extra one of them at a cost of £15. Just in case it was that, and of course now I know it's not that, but I'm going to replace it anyway. Again, just a case of future-proofing the system and um, making sure that that other half of the terminal block there, uh, the one with the dodgy burnt-out connections, uh, is replaced as well, right? So that's it. So I didn't need to do all of them jobs, but I did them, and I'm glad I've done them because it's pretty much future-proof the whole of the starting system, the ignition system. I know the spark plug's good. The ignition coil is the only other thing that could have uh, been changed. But I've upgraded the system and uh, I feel confident now for a good few thousand miles more. And I've learned a heck of a lot in the process. I suppose what I should really do is try and understand electrical circuits a bit more and um, really you know, figure out how to use the multimeter properly in terms of ohms and resistance and stuff. Um, but I'm pleased with what I've learned and I'm pleased with the, uh, the work I've done. And the extra money I've spent on bits, uh, I would have probably spent that on labour had I taken it in somewhere anyway. So it's all good. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Comment below and um, talk again soon. Cheers, guys.